Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for uh, being here. So uh, it was uh, an exhausting hurricane season for, for all of us. Uh, and uh, I do want to echo the fact that, uh, you know, the weather enterprise together uh, really uh, did a fantastic job here. And as sad as it's been for many uh, as victims of these uh, terrible hurricanes, uh, I, I do believe that the, uh, you know, public-private partnership came through in saving lives. And it's been a big, big deal. And without the Weather Service, we couldn't have done this. So, uh, you know, that's, that's really, really important to get across. Now, uh, you know, I, I didn't work Harvey as much. Uh, I, I worked Irma, of course, uh, with uh, great intensity, uh, first because it was a threat to the Eastern Caribbean. And uh, I am from Puerto Rico, but I also have some radio clients down there in the Caribbean islands. Uh, so I was already working Irma before it became a threat to Florida. And then in the wake of Irma, we had Maria. So, I mean, you can imagine just how exhausting the month of September might have been uh, for, for me. Uh, now, you know, in Florida, we, we face some challenges, right? And I, th I think this actually applies to, to many, many areas. Uh, in the, but in the case of Miami specifically, in the Florida Keys, you know, how do you mobilize a population which considers itself to be hurricane savvy? Uh, to a certain degree, many folks know it all and have seen it all. Uh, so, you know, I don't need to tell them how bad it's going to be. They know. They've been through it in the past. Uh, and, and that's a challenge. And uh, at the same time, in South Florida, we have the Hurricane Oblivious. And I mean, this is no insult to some of the folks that, that are there, but I mean, we do have a lot of recent arrivals who number in the tens of thousands coming from northern latitudes in places that have never had to face a hurricane threat. Plus, we have a lot of uh, immigrants as well that come from countries that don't necessarily, or a location in certain countries that don't necessarily face these threats. Uh, so, so we have that double whammy down there in South Florida. And when it's been a long, long time since we faced a major hurricane, I mean, keep in mind, uh, the last major hurricane strike in South Florida was Andrew. Uh, I'm talking about Southeast Florida, specifically the metro area. Uh, we did have Hurricane Wilma come through from Southwest to Northeast in 2005, but at the end of the day, Wilma produced either Category 1 or Category 2 conditions across the metro South Florida. Um, and and uh, quite the storm surge, by the way, in the Florida Keys. So there are many challenges uh, uh, regarding what, what we're uh, uh, dealing with there in South Florida. And th in the present day and age, on top of everything else, we have to be able to cut through the noise. And there sure is a lot of it today. Uh, you know, ever since the invention of the smartphone and, and to the present day, uh, since 2007 to today, I mean, things have grown exponentially in terms of just how many voices are out there and how many people are disseminating information. How do you cut through that? Uh, and finally, and I think this is the most important thing, and I spoke about this yesterday at the communications workshop, and I'm going to do so again today, messaging, right? I mean, yes, science is the basis of everything we do. And without science and without the work of the computer forecast models and, you know, the academics, and I mean, science is definitely the basis of everything we do. But messaging, when you have these critical situations, becomes even more important than the science. Now, in, in South Florida, uh, I've been on TV for 27 years, 18 years in Spanish, the last nine years in the English language, been to th in three different TV stations. My background before that, uh, I used to work for Louis <laughs> uh, at uh, NMC, the NSEP in, in Washington, and I worked in San Juan for many years. But I also worked uh, with Dr. Jose Colon, who was the director of the, uh, the uh, National Weather Service in San Juan, and of course, I was a young gun, you know, I was in my uh, early 20s, and I, every tropical uh, disturbance I saw out there, look, this thing is going to develop, and I was so excited, and he would say, oh, just, that's just a few showers, what are, what are you so concerned about? Bottom line is, I really, he became a mentor to me, and I, in South Florida, I am known as the non-alarmist guy. I mean, if you want a just the facts and he's not all that excited about this tropical cyclone guy, I I'm your person on Channel 6. Um, <laughs> and there are a couple of other folks, uh, you know, who get really, really excited, and you know how media is. And, but, I mean, I try to keep the producers at bay, try to keep them calm. But for Hurricane Irma, with the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center, which had a similar track to the great Miami hurricane of 1926, at a similar or greater intensity, 
cutting diagonally through the entire metro area, and then we're talking about a forecast that was issued around Thursday for a Sunday landfall, you can bet that my level of concern was through the roof. And I hadn't felt this way since Hurricane Andrew in 2000, in 1992, you know, more than a quarter century ago. So whereas I'm, I am the non-alarmist guy, some of what you're going to see here uh, certainly is a departure from uh, my non-alarmist style. But we had to get that across. We had to get across the urgency. Now, listen, folks are hungry for information at all hours of the day and night. So from my home office, I would do these Facebook Live hits, which had tens of thousands of views, basically a map discussion. That's all it was, and I used this software to be able to get different things on the screen at once, you know, a moving satellite picture, and usually on the left-hand side there, um, uh, uh, some models or uh, websites that I like to look at when I'm forecasting storms. But uh, this was extremely important because it allowed me to get out early and uh, try to, you know, make people, people realize whether this was going to be a real threat or not. Um, so th there was a lot of social media. I have become a big-time adopter of social media. One of the great things about social media is you get to engage folks. You get to put stuff out there, and the stuff stays out there. It's sticky. So, you know, in traditional media, you broadcast something, or you, whether it's on TV or on the radio, and unless somebody's recording it, it just disappears. You know, people can't refer to it over and over again. But in social media, they can, and I like that. Hopefully nobody will ever see me with a lampshade on my head after drinking too much <laughs> on a certain night. Anyway, so um, get out early, be persistent, engage, and answer questions. Listen, I'm a big fan of doing this because I feel that when I answer a question for one person, I'm answering a question for 3,000 people that have exactly the same question. Uh, you know, so you just saw the, the previous uh, slide there with the shift in the models and folks were already wondering, hey, is it going to shift back east? And as Louis said earlier, it was very difficult to determine the exact timing and nature of the turn towards the north. That was the biggest challenge in terms of, uh, of the track of Hurricane Irma. So my message at the time was basically don't let down your guard. I've, I've got this uh, uh, you know, great circumstance in my life that I can speak uh, Spanish and English uh, uh, with no problem. So this is one regarding Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, which as I said, I covered as well in social media. Can the eye stay out of Puerto Rico? And I said, it's, it's not impossible, but it's improbable. And uh, here's another one. Uh, and this, Ada's gonna have similar uh, stories, but you know, somebody's here is saying, I, I feel like I, I, I love John Morales as if he was a member of my family, and I'm telling them, listen, I'm suffering this with you. Big hug to you all. These are all things that I think are important, and they generate a word that you're going to hear from Ada as well. They generate trust. And folks have been watching Ada or listening to Ada and me for, for, for decades, and there's a lot of trust involved in what we do. But again, the life-saving message to me is equal or more important than the science, even though the science is the basis of everything we do. So I told you I'm the non-alarmist guy. However, on, I want to say Friday night, I've got my other, one of my other meteorologists on my staff, Ryan Phillips, and he's on the, on the line with the folks in National Weather Service Key West. And National Weather Service Key West is telling Ryan that they're about to go into full Katrina mode. Catastrophic, life-threatening, those type of messages were about to go out uh, from National Weather Service Key West. It was becoming more clear that a major hurricane was headed for the lower Florida Keys. So what did the non-alarmist guy do? Oh, no. No audio. What the heck are you doing? Oh, okay. Get Here we go. Out. All right. Listening to me Here on a Florida Key. If you're sitting on a Florida Key right now, what the heck are you doing? Get out now. In the Florida Keys, you are about to witness one of the worst hurricanes in the history of this country. And it, this thing is fixing to, as I used to say when I worked in Lake Charles, Louisiana, this thing is fixing to be a Category 5 hurricane pretty soon. Uh, it's down to, as you know, 155 miles an hour, but it's going to ramp up again. I'm confident, if not tonight, uh, tomorrow, we're going to have another Cat 5 again, and it's going to be on final approach to the Florida Keys. And for the Florida Keys, that means you'll have a 7 to 10 foot storm surge. You'll have 
flattening winds wiping everything out, plus the risk of tornadoes, plus, of course, uh, just uh, widespread rains. The overseas highway will be uh, inundated. Uh, again, 10 feet above ground now, 10 feet above ground in some locations. That's the potential for the storm surge. Nobody can survive a storm surge that deep. You simply cannot swim in that long enough with the breaking waves from a hurricane condition uh, to be able to survive. So again, I urge you, I implore that if you are in the Florida Keys right now and you haven't left because you think that you've, you know, oh, I lived through Hurricane, you know, X, and oh, I was here for Hurricane Y. Nothing necessarily compares to what's about to happen, and you need to take this seriously, and you need to get out. So, I've had folks, uh, well, they've sent me gifts, uh, but, 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 the, but the real message is that the folks are thanking me in the lower keys because they said that it was when they heard this and they saw my tone of voice, having known me for all these years and knowing me as the non-alarmist guy, they had not taken action and they were planning on riding the hurricane out in the lower Florida Keys until they saw me do this. And, I mean, honestly, Louie, I, I got to thank the National Weather Service in Key West and the fact that they were on the horn with us, you know, one-on-one -on -one service, not on the air, just, you know, telling Ryan Phillips what was about to happen down there. And it really clicked for me, and that's why I got on the air and did this. And, and uh, you, you'll be able to see a lot more uh, alarming moments like that and kind of funny moments like that. Uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2.30, I've got to talk with uh, really the rest of the details of, of how I covered Irma and Maria as well. Now listen, uh, you, can have your, you can have your full arsenal ready, but there's always things that you need to be prepared for. Uh, you know, we, we've got this brand new radar and we were able to show velocities and we were detecting tornadoes when the first band came through, uh, you know, showing people things that were spinning up and were about to be possible tornadoes and even before the weather service had the warning out. And, and people really appre appreciated that because they saw why it mattered. But then the wind blew open a hatch inside the radome and the radar shut down. And we lost the radar for a good half an hour before we figured out what the heck was happening in there. Uh, finally, I uh, got that uh, resolved. Meanwhile, I'm telling people to go into their uh, innermost most, you know, safe rooms in their homes, away from windows. We don't have any basements in South Florida, but, you know, away from windows and such. And I'm hoping that people are carrying a battery-operated radio because I've got some stations that are supposed to be simulcasting, but my stations bailed out on me. And they were not simulcasting our signal on the air, so they were listening to, in the case of, of one station, a top 40 station, they were listening to music. And I got very upset, and by the way, I, I, some of you know this, but I'm probably one, <laughs> you're already laughing. I'm, I'm probably one of the few people in broadcast media who's ever said the F word twice on TV and is still employed. <laughs> um, and what I didn't know is why my mic was still open and right after I called, I called out the radio stations on TV and I said, why are you not doing what you said you were going to do? And as I walked back to my office, my, uh, Ryan Phillips and my producer are going, yeah, man, you told them. They go, well, you know what I said. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that, that was aired. Um, and, uh, and also then uh, towards the tail end of this, after the hurricane was going up the west coast of Florida, we had uh, our, our power went out and an internet went out for five hours. So we had, for example, we were pointing an in-house camera to a computer forecast screen that was showing our radar, and that's how we were broadcasting the radar out to air, as opposed to, you know, having our graphics computer displayed on air. It was a kind of a rudimentary way of doing it, but it was still, at least we still got the radar on TV, and the guys were hand-drawing maps. I mean, it was, it was kind of funny. I wasn't there at the time. I was already sleeping uh, after a long, long coverage. But anyway, you have to be ready for anything, and this, I think, is important as far as best practices are, are concerned as well. Uh, either way, I mean, Irma was certainly a very long and very trying event. Uh, I believe the, the enterprise indeed saved lives. I was glad to be a part of it, and, um, uh, and thank you for your attention.